I'm going to show you how to get an administrative job in the government. If you're a U.S. citizen and you're watching this, the chances are you're eligible for this type of job. About 90% of the people that I speak with, they're eligible and they don't even know it. There are three sections in which I'm going to discuss this. The first one is if you're still in school, you're about to graduate. The second is your mid-career already, probably in your 30s or 40s. And then late career, 50 years old plus. Let's start with the younger and less experienced people. So if you're still in school right now, you need to be volunteering. When you're not focused on your academics and studying for the next exam or test, try to volunteer somewhere. Volunteer with your university, volunteer with your local community, because that's gonna be a difference maker. All things being equal, you and another candidate, if you both have bachelor degrees, What's going to make you stand out? It's your experience. Whether that's paid or unpaid, your experience is going to make you stand out. Now, when it comes to your degree or certifications, it doesn't necessarily matter what your degree is in. People from all type of majors get into the government and work admin jobs. Same thing with certifications. If you really want to get a certification, look at some sort of administrative skill like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Office, Word. SharePoint, something like that. If you are in school currently, then you probably should be looking at some of the government internships that are available. Some are paid and some are not paid. I would look specifically in the 0399, 0303, or 0301 job series. Something that looks kind of like this. This is an administrative position. You can use a job filter on usajobs.gov, put in the selections that interest you, and you can select a time for usajobs.gov to email you with new positions. This could be daily, weekly, or monthly. Keep in mind that students is the pathway for people still in school, and recent graduate is for people who have graduated in the past two years. If you are a veteran for recent graduate, you can use that up to six years after you graduate. Now the GS grade you're going to be targeting for a lot of these internships is going to be GS5, GS6, and GS7. If it's paid, it'll probably come out to around $50,000 a year. And we know that's not a lot of money, but it's a starting point. And you can build from that point. Every 12 months, you're going to be eligible for a promotion. But before you start applying, you need to make sure you have a strong and relevant federal resume. And if you're new to usajobs.gov, if you're new to the federal hiring process, I would recommend that you use the resume builder on usajobs.gov. And the reason I recommend this, especially for new people, is you will not miss any crucial information. So it will force you to input information that is required. And if you do not do that, you can be found disqualified. Now, once you are more proficient with usajobs.gov, or if you feel confident in your ability to meet the information that is required, then use a custom resume. It is your resume that is the key to get you the internship and also to get you a government job, period. It is the resume, and it's for that reason you need to show it to somebody. Show it to your educational counselor that's on the campus, or better yet, show it to somebody that's in the government. Have them review it. I guarantee if you're new to this whole thing, the first time you draft up your resume, there, there will be dozens of opportunities to improve that resume. But the thing that's gonna set you apart from everyone else, you, you're not gonna quit. The people around you, they might give up, they might go to the private sector and do something completely different. But you, I know you're not gonna give up. You will use volume and you will keep applying. There are a lot of opportunities in this job series, but at the same time, there's a lot of people competing for them. So stay consistent and stay determined throughout that process. And another thing that can help you is by attending virtual hiring events. There are some that are focused, they're tailor-made for students. They're perfect for the recent graduate. To register and sign up for these events, you can find most of them on usajobs.gov. There's a hiring event section on that webpage. But some agencies, they don't advertise their hiring events to usajobs.gov. So I go on their webpage and I pull that information out and I'll email it to you every month if you'd like. If that interests you, then sign up for my free newsletter down below. Okay, next let's look at the mid-career professional. This person, they already have 5, 10, 15 years of experience. But whether they were in the military, they were in the private sector, they want to do a career shift. They want to switch and pursue government employment. 
Now, what I would tell this person is you do not need to start off at the bottom of the GS scale. I'm talking about GS6, GS7, GS9. You do not need to do that. What I would target in your situation is GS11 through GS13. Now, this is going to be location dependent because if you're in a small rural town, then it'll be hard for you to get a GS12, right? But if you go to a city, Chicago, New York, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, San Francisco, if you go to a major metropolitan city, it is going to be a lot easier to get a GS11 or a GS12. I have personally seen people leave the military after 20 years and they come into a GS14 position. I have seen people leave the private sector after 15 years and they come into the government as a GS-13. Anyone who tells you that you have to start at the bottom is not telling you the truth. What you will have to do is reword a lot of your experience. So when you look at the job announcement, you're going to look at the specialized experience section and you're pulling out verbs. You're pulling out words from there and you're making your resume match. Here's some of the words that you can see. You can see words like planning, coordinating, processing, reviewing, reports, performs analysis. Human resources cannot make assumptions on your experience. You cannot simply list that you were an office manager and then all of a sudden they know you're proficient with Microsoft Word. You have to mention it. And here are some of the job announcements that you should be looking at. Something like a staff assistant. This one here is a GS-13, administrative specialist, a management program advisor, or an administrative and management specialist. This last one is a ladder position that goes from GS9 to GS15. Ladder positions are great because after 12 months, you're eligible for the next GS grade. Now, this is not automatic. You are going to have to have a conversation with your supervisor to make sure you're meeting expectations, but the potential is baked into this type of position. Okay, next, let's look at the late career person. This person is typically over 50 years old. They, they already had a pretty good career, more than likely, but now they're looking at benefits. They're looking at what the government can offer them in terms of pension. They want to lock in that pension and have a secure retirement. And there's many reasons that a person could be attracted to the government aside from benefits. In certain federal government positions, you could be making an impact on a large amount of people. Some of the policies that you help implement could really have a strong positive benefit towards a lot of people in this country. So it's not just benefits, but it also could be a calling to service. This type of person usually has 25, 30, 35 years of experience. And what they should really be looking at is GS-13 to GS-15. In some cases, SES. If you're an executive, if you have executive equivalent experience, SES might be a better fit for you. And surprisingly, a lot of these type of positions, you're not a supervisor. There are GS-14, GS-15 positions where you don't supervise anybody. Also, SL, which is the equivalent of an SES, but it's, it's considered a senior leader when you're more of a consultant, they do not supervise anyone either. So if you don't want to supervise anyone, but you still want to have somewhat of a high grade, that's a possibility. Here are a few examples of some of the job announcements you should be looking at. The first one is a senior policy advisor. Then we have deputy regional administrator, supervisory executive assistant, and deputy executive director. Listen, there will always be people that say you cannot get in on the upper echelons of government. They'll say you have to know somebody. You have to have a special type of relationship. And that's simply not true. That's uh, usually coming from a population of individuals that are really frustrated because they were not able to get in for one reason or the other. It is absolutely possible. And it will come down to how often you're applying and how strong and relevant your resume is. Every job that I mention, it's open to the public. So anybody who is a U.S. citizen, they can apply. Now, if you're a veteran, if you're disabled, if you're from the Peace Corps, that can give you a special advantage. But if you are considering federal employment, but you really want a little bit more guidance when it comes to what GS grade you should be applying in, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.